What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access. Today we're joined by Propaganda. Thank what's you for up, coming through, up, sir. What's up, what's up? Appreciate you. Yes, likewise. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's got a new project that came out recently called Crooked. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the many things about it that I thought was very interesting is the very overtly and heavily political nature of the album. Yeah. <clears throat> so why was that something that you wanted to do? Man, uh, I feel like it was, I mean, like culture has pushed us to where it's like unavoidable, you know what I mean? Um, if I'm gonna make an album that's relevant in any way, shape or form, it's like, it's the 800 pound gorilla, like, you know what I mean? You can, you know, ignore that, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. And then secondly, like my, um, I mean, my, my albums, you know, really from day one, I've always had a tone of sort of political commentary, mm -hmm. social commentary. So I feel like it just kind of sat in the same space, but I, I just, there's such a ratcheting of culture that it was like, this is like really unavoidable, you know? Yeah, I agree with you, of course, but I also think this may be, Crooked may be more overt. Ah, yeah, yeah, for sure. And more uh, uh, prominent throughout the entire album. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, which had a lot to do with where I was, obviously, like emotionally. Yes. And um, kind of I had found myself thrust into a position where I was actually asked to speak on a, a very particular topics, whether it was just like coming to do like keynotes or like mm -hmm. helping like staff. Some, sometimes they're like church staff, sometimes they're, uh, you know, nonprofits or businesses like help us think through like this race thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I live such an intersectional life, like I'm married to a lot, like a first generation Latina, you know what I'm saying? Um, and who's a doctor in education, you know what I'm saying? So okay. like there's so many like intersections that I had gotten asked to like speak on. So, and just what was happening with me emotionally and like trying to like put a finger on like why I feel this way and giving voice to, I knowing that peop, uh, there's a good amount of unheard voices that feel exactly like I feel. Yeah, and I think the album with Crooked Ways, the way it starts off, mm. I think is a good introduction to the album. Yeah. So how and why did Crooked end up being the title and Crooked Ways fit in so much that you wanted to make it the first yeah. song? So there's a symmetry with the title, with the first song and the last song, mm -hmm. um, which is like technically like it's a, it's a, it's a reference of something that like Jesus said in one of the gospels, like, He'll come and make the crooked and and crooked ways made straight. So uh, so that's like the or he'll come and make the crooked way straight. So the, the idea was like the first song is crooked ways and the last song is made straight. Uh, so it's crooked ways made straight. So anyway, um, so that's like there's like a meta narrative going on there. But I think the first song really was like I had spent a lot of the year before doing a lot of poetry events. Mm -hmm. and I was like, man, I just want to rap. You know what I mean? So there was a part of me that was like seven minutes raps. Let's go bars. Um, but the importance of opening up the album was like, let me just s scrub your palate clean that I'm gonna talk about a lot of things mm -hmm. and I'm gonna do a lot of rapping. Um, but, it, 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 but it's really like ultimately is this, is this is the tension of like, when you're talking about crooked, like you can always point out and say, this is a crooked system, but a crooked system comes from crooked relationships uh, because of crooked desires which means that I have to talk about myself, you right. know what I'm saying? So so that first song is really about that tension, how it's like, I don't know, if like going through it, you're seeing me switch between what I'm seeing and who I am. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing and who I am and kind of how I'm, I'm indicted in both of those situations, you know what I'm saying? So that's like why like I wanted to lay that out in the beginning. And that's one thing I think that's interesting about that song in particular and throughout a lot of your work throughout your career is the accountability layer. Yeah. Because one thing, uh, obviously given the uh, atrocious history of our country, mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, ways that people examine race and rap and most of it is um, you know, being upset or frustrated or angry or, or rage filled, all of which is justified in my mm -hmm. opinion. But that being said, there's not as much where people are talking about being accountable or what yeah, did yeah, I yeah. do or how can I improve? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all, it's all in there, but it's yeah. not as yeah, pronounced. Man. So yeah. for you, why is that important to elaborate on? Absolutely. I think there's an important um, understanding of like power and oppression and a continuum. Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes we try to do like what we, my wife calls the oppression Olympics. Okay. Like where it's like, <laughs> I've suffered worse than you, therefore every cause needs to be about mine. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. But I think when you do that, you short circuit, you short circuit the resistance, period. So if you see 
oppression as an as an umbrella, if you will, that motif of like power and oppression is like an umbrella that stretches over all of it. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, things like uh, what um, Kimberly Crenshaw, UCLA uh, expert on critical race theory, uh, this concept of intersectionality, which has to do with like um, sort of the ways that our identities overlap as they relate to power, mm -hmm. right? Um, so which would mean that like in that overlap, I'm, I'm crushed, but I'm also indicted. Like uh, in the sense that like whatever situation that created Standing Rock, I get I'm crushed under that same oppression, right. but I know I live on stolen land. Like I know I live on native soil. So it's like I'm, I'm indicted just as much as I'm pressed by it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I am, I live in America, I, I exist a, a considerable amount of male privilege. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So whatever privilege that comes with being a male that my wife is crushed under, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Right. I, 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 I get it because it's, it's still patriarchy and it's, and for America, it's a, it's a white patriarchy, but the right. point is I still benefit. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important that when you understand the overlap, then I think that that pushes all of our narratives forward better.